Hi, this is Brent with Emotiva, and today in this video, I'm going to talk about all the great features and options available in your Basics processor to help you configure it for your system. Here, we're going to take a look at some of the other uh, configuration options that are available in uh, this Basics MC1 processor that we're working on here. And, uh, you know, we have our other video that goes through uh, the specifics of your speaker setup and configuration. Uh, so we're not going to get into that in this video. This video is meant to look at uh, some of the other options, some other, uh, you know, common questions that may come up on the MC1, and just some other features uh, to make you aware of. So one of the first things I want to look at, and we're going to stick mostly in our setup menu here, I want to look at our audio mode menu. This is a portion of the menu where you can dictate what sound field mode the processor will use based on whatever the incoming audio signal is. And so this first selection, analog, uh, PCM, two channel, right? Anytime you get a PCM or an analog two channel signal, pure is the mode that's selected. Of course, pure is going to do the absolute least amount of processing and touching to that signal. And so for analog, uh, it makes sense that, that we want to, you know, maybe have pure there. Multi-channel PCM, so if you get a PCM 5.1, 7.1, by multi-channel we just mean more than two-channel, uh, right now uh, this is selected to uh, multi-channel, right? And, and we can talk in a minute about what the multi-channel option means, uh, but again, uh, for every input signal format, you have a different default to set it to. Now, uh, we'll, we'll, again, we'll talk about what multi-channel means here in a second, but in general, the default for, for Dolby 2-channel, um, at least this is maybe just kind of my opinion or maybe a suggestion, but when I get a Dolby 2.0 signal, I like for the Dolby up mixer to handle any Dolby signals. And so I like to set my default for Dolby 2-channel to the Dolby up mixer. Uh, of course, the, the default for Dolby multi-channel, like a Dolby Digital 5.1 or a, a True HD uh, Dolby track, is already going to use the Dolby up mixer code. Code. And similar for DTS 2 channel. If I get a DTS 2 channel, and, and of course this is assuming I, I wanted to play it in kind of a surround format, I want the, the DTS Neural X up mixer uh, to handle that, which is of course the default already selected for DTS multi channel, like a 5 or 7.1, etc. You, you'll notice that for DTS, I don't have the Dolby up mixer option available. And that's simply because you know DTS doesn't want the Dolby up mixer decoding DTS formats. And similarly, um, well, for Dolby, I can uh, have, uh, you know, DTS decode Dolby, um, but we can't have Dolby de decode uh, DTS. And of course, AAC, you know, not, not the most common format, you know, often a, a just a kind of music file format, but we also have the option there. So, so let's talk a little bit about what this multi-channel mode means, because this has kind of been a common question and it it's, uh, needs to be, you know, spelled out a little bit more in the manual. Multi-channel treats two-channel input signals, like a 2.0 PCM, and a, uh, a multi-channel signal, like a 5.1 PCM, it, it treats them differently. When you have multi-channel selected as a sound field mode, and it receives a 2.0 or stereo signal, it is going to effectively treat that as an all stereo mode, where it's gonna spread that two channel around to all your speakers and, and kind of play them in equal output. And so that's what we kind of call a, a party mode, where you just wanna get that two channel into all your speakers to kind of fill the room with, with music or something like that. However, if you play a multi-channel, like a 5.1 signal, uh, and you have multi-channel selected as the mode, it's effectively gonna do a basic up mix similar to like maybe a Dolby up mixer, where it's gonna take that you know 5.1 signal and, and actually up mix it to the rest of your surrounds. Not as much as like a party mode where it's just uh, playing the same thing out of all speakers, but actually trying to you know simulate a, a real surround experience. Uh, and so, you know, that's one of the reasons why I like to set Dolby 2 channel to up mix. Uh, if I was getting Dolby Digital 2.0 for music, maybe I'd want to use multi-channel, so it's it's you know playing in that kind of all stereo mode. But in general, a Dolby Digital 2.0, you know, is fairly common for for streaming or live TV, where I may want to experience it more in like a, a surround sound type of a setup. And and the Dolby Up Mixer is going to do the best job with the Dolby 2 channel. Um, but this this gives you some configurability for the automatic mode the unit will switch into when it receives these different kinds of input signals. Again, I like kind of aligning all the Dolby Dolby's with the Dolby up mixer and DTS with the DTS uh, Neural X up mixer. But again, that's just an example of, of kind of how you can use that portion of the menu. Uh, another portion of setup where, where I think we have some, some options uh, 
that are a little bit different than we've had in the past and, and some really highly configurable things is in our, our source setup. And here, we're kind of changing per each input on the MC1 uh, that we're working on, some different different kind of options for, for each. And so I'm gonna select HDMI 1. Let's take a look at, at some HDMI options. Of course, we can enable, we can turn that off so that basically it just doesn't show up in our, our list of inputs. Um, and, and that can kind of just help you trim down, uh, you know, how many inputs you have to scroll through if you're not directly selecting them with the uh, the input buttons. Uh, we can obviously rename it. So if I have, a, you know, a, an Apple TV selected uh, or connected to HDMI 1, we could rename that so that it shows up as, you know, what, whatever we want to name it. And then under that, you see we have a couple options, video source and audio source. You know, I, I kind of recommend that, you know, if you're, you're using HDMI input 1, that we leave the video source as HDMI 1 just so that we don't confuse ourselves. But you can actually assign any of uh, our HDMI video feeds to HDMI input one, which to me is, is a, again, can be a little confusing because you know we're still calling it HDMI one, but we can assign a different HDMI input to it. Uh, but it just gives you a high amount of configurability for how you want to set up your inputs. Uh, so in general, you know, I, I like to leave the video source as the HDMI input that it really goes along with. But for example, if you know I'm using an HDMI device for video, but I want to to listen to uh, you know, optical audio or coax digital audio from a separate connection, we can align a different uh, audio source to any video source uh, fairly easily in the source setup menu. And so, you know, I can listen to my optical audio along with my video from HDMI 1. And this is great if, uh, you know, say you're, you're like me and you like to put sports on, but then listen to music on top of sports, you could set up a special input for that configuration where, hey, you know, I, I'm watching, a, you know, the game on HDMI 1 for the video source, but I wanna listen to music on my stream or something from a different audio source. Very easy to do in these basics units here. And so, you know, we'll, we'll just, uh, I'll, I'm just gonna go back to HDMI audio so it's, it's lined back up there. We can also assign uh, a specific equalization to each input. Um, so for example, you know, uh, if I just hit default, it's just gonna follow the default set it, global setting that's put in our equalization setup. So if I have, you know, emo queue or bypass selected globally, then default's just gonna follow that. But um, say I only wanted to use the emo queue filter or the auto EQ as it's called here, just for my, my surround sound. Um, but when I go to my two channel audio, that's playing in pure, I want it to be bypassed, we can select, you know, just bypass for, for any of our, our uh, inputs that we don't want to be EQ'd or that we do want to be EQ'd. So we have the, the selectability there. And then another uh, option uh, are a little bit different here. We have some, some extra things available that, that I think could be really useful. And, and the default selection is independent. And basically this means that, say I select HDMI 1 and I set that to negative 30 dB as kind of my, my standard listening level. That's, that's where I like to listen for that input. Uh, but when I switch to one of my analog inputs, you know, I find that I'm having to, to change the volume or something. Well, it, to, to you know, match the level. Well, the independent volume, volume control, that basically assigns a separate volume setting to each input so that when you switch between inputs, it goes back to whatever the volume setting was the last time you were using that input. And I think that's great because it automatically lets us kind of, you know, have a different volume setting for our different inputs uh, where we're not having to, you know, kind of change the volume to account. And then we can also select unified, which is kind of the opposite where we're used to all of the, the inputs, no matter what we select, are going to have the same volume setting, whatever was last set on the previous input, and not have its own individual input, uh, volume setting. Um, you know, so so there's not necessarily one correct or incorrect one to use. Independent is default. I, I think that'll work for a lot of folks. Unified just kind of lines up all the volumes between each input. Uh, if you keep going down, or sorry, if we if we go up instead of down, um, we'll, we'll see that we have options where we can just set uh, a level trim, right? And so it starts at negative 20, and then I can go all the way up to zero, uh, and then keep going up to positive 20. But this lets you set kind of a a standard adjustment uh, set volume amount that that will be kind of altered uh, away from you know the unified or, or standard volume control. Um, but you do have some volume options there to either have the each volume for for each input be independent, or to kind of link them up and unify them all under one volume setting. And you know, another thing that's useful, if you ever do get uh, things kind of mixed up, maybe you, you mismatch your video and audio and you just kind of want to reset um, your, your inputs, you can just go back to default and it's going to reset all those settings in case you get things a little bit mixed up with your assignments there. Um, and then, you know, we, we looked at an HDMI input just because, you know, they're going to have video and audio, but we'll look, even if we go to a, a 
an audio only and put like coax, um, I still have an option for video source, right? And by default, it's no video because you know there isn't video that goes along with that digital coax audio connection. But this is a great way to where I can even say I'm using HDMI one, uh, you know, for for streaming. And, and the example I gave earlier was, you know, listen to music while I'm I'm watching a, a game or something where I don't want to hear the commentators. You know, I can even set up my coax input so that you know I can leave HDMI one alone and let it line up when I select HDMI one with HDMI one's audio. And then I can set up my coax, which is the, the other audio source I may want to use along with HDMI one to use the video from HDMI one. So then I can, you know, switch to that coax input and it'll pull the video from HDMI one and, and very highly configurable as far as, you know, which, which video and, and audio can go together. You can do it on the HDMI video input and, or you can go to the audio uh, only inputs and assign a video source from uh, one of your HDMI inputs, which is great. Uh, the rest of these items are, are the exact same. I uh, just kind of wanted to look at how you can also configure video for those audio only uh, inputs there. So uh, a few other uh, just items to point out uh, because these are things specific to the MC1 uh, where we've got questions on or that are just, I think, kind of important features. We'll go under setup and we're going to go in the option menu. Here under option, we have a lot of different, you know, kind of uh, selections here. I'm not going to go through all of them, just kind of hit some of the highlights. So we have another, another volume option here. And here, uh, of course, we have a vo power on volume. You can say just use the same volume before shutdown or you can set, you know, a specific number um, to, to set the, the volume on. You can set a max volume to pre prevent, you know, hands that should not be touching your equipment from turning it up too loud, uh, which is, is a nice just kind of protection step there. Uh, you can also change how many increments or how large the increment is for each volume step. You can do half, uh, half dB, which is standard, or if you like a, a bigger jump, you can need to do one or even two dB for every volume click. Here's one that I think a lot of folks will like. Uh, you can do a volume display where zero is lowest and then 80 is is maximum or we can switch to the real gain volume mode uh, and this uh, will actually give us a negative DB reading as we're, we may be used to kind of uh, in the AV world uh, and so that that negative uh, volume you can get by, by going to option uh, and do select the real gain uh, option for uh, for our, our volume display mode, which, which I kind of prefer. It's just kind of what I'm used to. Outside the volume options, I wanted to specifically look at the HDMI options, right? HDMI is always, uh, you know, always something we gotta, gotta work out on these processors. And you'll notice under the HDMI uh, option menu, this, this first selection is HDMI out select. And of course, I, by default, we have both of the HDMI outputs as active, but we on, on the, the MC1 here that we're working with, we can actually turn off or only select one of the outputs to be active at any one time. And something that can happen, there's actually an HDMI out button on your remote. It's, it's just up into the right of the navigation pad. And if you toggle that button accidentally, you can accidentally turn off uh, like the primary output, HDMI output one. And so if you're not getting picture for any reason, uh, you know, make sure your HDMI out is on uh, for, for the HDMI output you have connected to your display. Uh, just something that can happen. Um, or, you know, you can always leave both on. The reason to, to turn off one output and only leave one active is if you have multiple displays displays connected, say you have a 1080 and a 4K display and you want to watch 4K, well, turning off the output that the 1080 display is connected to allows the sources to, to send 4K instead of trying to accommodate both devices by sending a 1080 signal. So you can kind of get one out of the picture uh, if you have two displays connected, which I think is really nice. Some of these other options are our standard uh, CEC options, sync to TV power. If you turn that on, the processor is just going to listen to uh, CEC commands from the TV when it sees your TV turn on, it's going to turn on. And when the TV turns off, uh, then it'll turn itself off. Of course, that's also dependent on how the TV is configured for CEC to send and receive those commands. And uh, it's important that you're using HDMI output number one in most cases, which also carries the ARC capability uh, for, for using those CEC commands. A standby video is effectively what it sounds like. If you turn that on, the then video should still be passed through the processor up to your TV. If you don't want to start up the whole system, just turn your TV on. You can still enjoy your HDMI sources uh, passing through the processor. And of course, CEC input change, uh, that's just saying whether or not uh, it's going to listen to input change commands from connected CEC devices. When initially configuring, I recommend leaving that off just because CEC input change can cause odd HDMI behavior. So, you know, 
but leave that off at first. You can always turn it on and, and experiment with that. A CEC control just needs to be left on in general if you plan to use any CEC commands or any ARC functionality. CEC control is just kind of the blanket on or off, and then you have some, some other options in here for, for specific options like input change and, and the power commands, a sync to TV power. The, the other item here for HDMI option that is kind of buried uh, is HDMI format. Uh, and here, for HDMI 1, 2, and 3, we can individually set this, and then HDMI input 4, 5, and 6, well, they're kind of lumped together in one category. Uh, but in general, leaving these to auto you know, works in, in most cases. But if you are having trouble, in particular with a device that is an older HDMI device that maybe supports only a 1080p output, but you may want to select standard uh, if it's 1080p only. Uh, some cable box and like dish boxes that are only 1080p can really benefit from, from changing this. We're just telling that input to only expect um, you know, 1080 on that input. And of course the enhance option is for uh, you know, 4K devices plus HDR, Dolby Vision, and that type of thing. Um, I found that uh, you know, even when I select enhance, uh, sometimes I need to go back to auto um, to get you know, that full 4K with HDR. Uh, you know, this is just kind of changing how the processor negotiates and reports the different resolution capabilities. Uh, in general, we'll, we'll leave it. This is where you can alter that, that kind of uh, HDMI info for, for 1080 devices, or if you have a 4K device, you're having trouble getting uh, you know, HDR or Dolby Vision, setting that to enhance uh, you know, is, is a great trouble shooting step. As far as uh, you know, other things to, to pay attention to, those are most of the highlights. You know, we, a lot of the rest of this is fairly self-explanatory. I just kind of wanted to uh, you know, look at most of the things that I would configure uh, when I'm setting up uh, my basics unit out of the box. Uh, and of course, you know, be sure to go and find our speaker setup video. We kind of did a, a separate uh, you know, tutorial on speaker setup for more information there to make sure your uh, speaker configuration is correct. And please let us know if you ever have any questions. Thanks for joining me today. And hopefully this video was helpful in showing you all of the different features and options that are packed into your basics processor. From everyone here at Emotiva, happy listening.